All right, so this morning we are going to walk through DocuSign, um, step by step of everything um, from compliance to, um, sorry, from opportunity to compliance. Um, as I'm going through the training, stop me with any questions. This training is all for you, so I want to make sure that you walk away from this, understanding how to use DocuSign, being a lot more comfortable with it, uh, and just know that even after this training, if you ever have any questions or you're trying to put together a contract, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. I want to make sure that I'm always available so that way you can um, get all your contracts and everything out uh, on time. So I'm going to get started. And before we actually jump into the opportunity in DocuSign, I really am briefly going to walk through how to set up your account. So in command, up in the top right hand corner, click on your name and come down to settings. And this is going to default into all of your connected applications integrations. And you'll want to come to DocuSign here and there'll be a button here that says create account. You would want to click on that create account button. And then you're going to want to use your KW email address. Now I do want to point out that if you have already created a DocuSign account, uh, like one of their free accounts using your KW email address, you won't be able to use that same email address now for this account. So you can email DocuSign um, support and ask them to switch out the email address for that free account to free up your KW email. Come in here, create your account. It'll send you an email that you will authorize um, and then click submit. Then you log in and it's that simple. Usually takes about two minutes. There are a handful of videos, I think three videos that I put together um, on the KW First Atlanta official YouTube page that walks you through that. So this is where you get started with creating your DocuSign account. It's important that you create your DocuSign account from within the uh, settings app, settings of command. So that way DocuSign knows that you are a KW agent, gives you the right permissions, and it links the two systems together. That's going to be one of the benefits of using DocuSign through command is that it will eliminate a couple steps along the way since the two systems do speak to each other. Once you have everything set up, now it's time to start uh, using DocuSign. So I'm gonna go to opportunities. I've already uh, gone ahead and created an opportunity just for time's sake. So I'm gonna click on my all opportunities and it's gonna show me a list of all of my active opportunities. I'm gonna come down here to one, two, three, four Main Street. You can see I filled in all the information here. I've included the information about the property. I wanna point out really quickly the opportunity name. So you can see, um, so for today, we're gonna to be working on a listing as our example. And the reason I wanna walk through a listing is because I wanna show you how to use the seller's property disclosure and community association disclosure, since those are two really important documents for your clients. But here you see the opportunity name is 1234 Main Street dash Stark Pots dash listing. And this is in a very specific name of having the address dash client last name dash listing. And the reason I have it this way is so that way the MCA office can easily connect any documents that I send them or that I upload to the actual property so they can double check and make sure everything is um, organized and they have all the documents they need to process this transaction. If you're working with a buyer, your opportunity name can start out being client last name dash buyer. And then as soon as you go under contract, you can update that opportunity name to include the property address, dash client last name, dash buyer. And again, you wanna update that as soon as you go under contract so that way the MCA office can connect all of your paperwork to the opportunity. Since I have the opportunity created, I'm gonna click on the documents tab. And then you can see over here on the right-hand side, there's this button that says start a transaction. If you are in the, uh, excuse me, in the buyer side or a buyer opportunity, you want to click the under contract button here and then click the start a transaction button. It is very, very, very important that you click start a transaction from within command. This is what is going to tell DocuSign to create a new room and it's going to link that room in DocuSign to the opportunity in command. This is what is going to allow that main benefit of having those two systems linked because that way you can upload documents directly from DocuSign into command. If you create 
a room in DocuSign directly, you will never be able to retroactively connect that room to your opportunity, which for some, it may not be a big deal. For others, it may be uh, just a big pain in the side. So always make sure you click start a transaction here. So I'm gonna click on start a transaction and it's going to open up a new window within uh, Chrome for DocuSign. If you have pop-up blockers on, it will prevent this window from opening up. So if you see a red box in your URL bar, click on that, turn off pop-up blockers, allow for DocuSign and command. Log in using the information that you use to create your account. Logging in. Now it has dropped me into the documents tab of my new room. And I know that it is the correct room because up here, the room name is 1234 Main Street dash Stark Pots dash listing. And that's the same name as my opportunity. So that's how we know that they're linked. Below here is an ID number. And I'm not going to walk through too much about that today, but if you ever want to email documents directly into your DocuSign room, you can use this ID number here. That's kind of a, a DocuSign 2.0 feature, but I do like to point it out since it was a popular feature within DotLoop. So this morning, I'm gonna walk through DocuSign as if I've never been in DocuSign before. The first thing we need to do the very first time we're in DocuSign is to confirm our NRDS ID number. That nerds number is what's going to allow DocuSign or confirm with DocuSign that I am a member of the National Association of Realtors and I have access to the Georgia Association of Realtor forms. To do that, there are two different ways that you can confirm, confirm your nerds number. The first and the most simple is when you come into DocuSign, you're in the documents tab. You can come over here to the add button, click on that, select DocuSign forms. This pop-up window is going to show, it's going to have two logos. I'm going to click on the Realtor logo for National Association of Realtors. And then I'm going to put in my nine-digit NRDS ID number. Now, I've only met two agents that know this nine-digit number. So if you're like me and you don't know it, you can click on the Find Your NRDS ID link. And this will pop up a new window where you can use your last name, your email address, and or license real, your real estate license number to look up your uh, nerds information. So I'm gonna type in my last name and my license number. I'm gonna click submit. Here's my nine digit nerds number. So I'm gonna highlight that, copy it. I'm gonna close this window because I don't need it anymore. I'm gonna paste it right there. Then I'm gonna make sure my last name here matches the same last name that I used to create or used when I joined the Atlanta uh, Realtors Association. If for whatever reason you got married, divorced, had any type of name change, you need to use the same name that matches your uh, association membership. If you got married or divorced and uh, you joined with a previous name, you can email the Atlanta Realtor Association and let them know of your name change and they can update it. So that way uh, it'll confirm that your GAR, GAR membership is linked up to NAR and you're good to go. Below here we have association, and this is where I'm going to confirm that I'm a member of the Georgia Association. So to do that, I'm going to click on this drop down menu, and then I'm just going to go ahead and scroll all the way to the bottom of that list. They're not in alphabetical order. And then I'm going to kind of scroll up here to the top of that last page, and here's Georgia Association of Realtors. I'm going to click on that, then select validate. It's going to let me know that I have now validated those memberships. And if this is your very first time confirming your nerds information, It'll also have a secondary pop-up here asking you to accept the terms and conditions of the Georgia Association of Realtors and the forms that you're about to use. Once you get this screen that says add DocuSign forms, that will let you know that you are good to go to use all of the GAR forms. So that's option number one to how to confirm your nerds information. The second way is up here in the top right-hand corner, if you click on your image or your initials and then select preferences, and then on the left-hand side, click on integrations and then scroll down to your NRDS ID information. This would be another place you can confirm it. Right here where you see this clear button, there would be that same link that says find your NRDS ID number. You can click on that to then search for it. And again, you, your number here, your last name, and confirm that you're a member of the Georgia Association of Realtors. 
Make sure you do that before you do anything else, because if you don't confirm that NERDS information, you will not have access to the GAR forms. So now that we've confirmed the our NRDS ID number, any questions so far? Nope. All right. Well, if anything comes up, let me know. So I'm gonna click back into the room that I just created. And I'm gonna click right here into the documents tab because I wanna pretend like we we're, we uh, are right where DocuSign dropped us off. In the documents tab, when you start using DocuSign, your first thought is like, oh yeah, let me go ahead and add these documents. I need to get out my listing agreement and all my disclosures. Before you start adding any documents, you need to go to the details tab and fill in all the information about your clients and this transaction. So I'm gonna click on the details tab up here. And it's so important that you fill in this information here because the information on the details tab is what's going to auto-populate the fields on your GAR forms. And it'll just kind of save you uh, from having to write it and type it in later. This page, <clears throat> excuse me, this page is broken up into two different sets of information. So the left-hand side, uh, about three quarters of the page, is gonna be information about the property uh, and the transactions. So you can see we have our, our room name, list side, currency, address, listing details, offer details, highest bid closing details, and additional information and property details. And then on the right-hand side, we have information about our clients. And this scrolls down pretty far. So we have seller one, seller two, buyer one, buyer two. So let's update this information. So I'm gonna click on the edit button in the top right-hand corner. And I'm just gonna start at the top and I'm gonna work my way down and fill in all the information that I know. If you don't know it, that's fine. You can always add it later on or as a transaction, as you learn more information throughout the transaction, you can add it. So I'll start here with local currency. I'm gonna select USD. MLS ID, I'm just gonna type in a number here, but you just wanna copy that MLS number. Origin of lead, don't really need to know that. Company room status, that's eh, fine. I'll leave it as is. Our address here, so I'm gonna do one, two, three, four. Main Street Northeast in Atlanta, Fulton County. Select Georgia. Postal code 30324. Property type, I'll select single family detached. Year built, I'm going to just select 2009. Special circumstances, and there are no special circumstances today. Listing details. So listing date, I'll select today, the 22nd, as a listing date. Listing expiration, let's just do one month. So I'll do February 22nd. Original listing amount, I'll do 415. Current listing, 415. Original listing, 415. Local listing, 415. Scrolling down, offer details. We're just now listing the property, so I don't have any offer details just yet. Highest bid confirmation, don't have any of that. Closing details or additional information. So I'm good filling out the information about the property. Now on the right-hand side in this column, I'm gonna make sure that all the information about my clients is correct. So since I'm working on a listing, I will fill in the information for seller one and seller two. Now you'll notice that Tony's information is already pre-populated. That is another benefit of using command and DocuSign is DocuSign will pull in that contact information directly out of command. I do wanna point out that this works nine times out of 10. And if you, add a contact in command, then immediately create an opportunity, and then immediately after that, create your room. It probably won't pull up or pull in that contact information because it hasn't had, the command had not had enough time to sync the two or sync the information. So you'll just wanna go over here and add it. At the bare minimum, you need your client's name and email address. So I have Tony's name, his email address, Scrolling down to seller two, we have Pepper Potts and her email address. Scrolling down, we have listing agent, which is me. So here's my name, business number, my email address, company. Now you'll notice here it says Keller Williams Realty First Atlanta. I'm gonna go ahead and remove realty. It seems like a small thing, but for whatever reason, 
the name fields for the company. Um, if you include Keller Williams Realty First Atlanta, it's too big, so it covers up other texts. So here we have our address. I'm just going to complete this. So it's Atlanta, country, United States, state, Georgia, and postal code 30342. I'm going to continue to scroll down. We have listing agent too. So if you are uh, working with another agent on this listing, you can fill in his or her information here. Scrolling down, you'll see we have buyer one and buyer two. So if you are working on the buy side of the transaction, you want to fill in your client's information here. Scrolling down, we have the buyer's agent one and buyer's agent two. Now, it, I'm for today, I am working on a listing. So I might want to go ahead and fill in the, a buyer's agent's information, which is fine. You can do that. But I want to, I'll point it out here and I'll also uh, say it again when we go into the envelope and send these out for signature. I do not recommend sending documents to any co-op agent through DocuSign. I always recommend that you download documents as PDF and email them over. And we'll walk through that in more detail in just a moment, but I wanted to go ahead and point that out. So now that all this information is good to go, I'm gonna click save in the bottom right-hand corner. So all my details have been saved. And now I'm gonna to go to the documents tab because now we've confirmed our nerds information, we've updated the details tab, so now I can start adding my documents. You'll, you'll notice here we have a room docs folder. Everything is going to default into that room docs folder. So when I add those empty, those blank GAR forms, or I upload something from my computer, or once I get a signed document back, it will default into the room docs folder. But we do have the ability to create new folders so we can organize our uh, room any which way that we want. I do want to point out that back uh, when we were using dot loop, we needed to organize our, our loops in a certain way for Lynn and Alita for compliance review. Lynn and Alita will never be looking in your DocuSign room, so you can organize it any which way that you want. So it can be as messy or as organized as you want. If you would like to create a document, or excuse me, if you'd like to create a folder, click on actions in the top right hand uh, corner, click on add folder, and I'm gonna make a listing agreement folder. Click create, and here's my listing agreement folder. Now I wanna start adding my GAR forms to the room. So to do that, I'm gonna click on add in the top right hand corner, select DocuSign forms. We'll give this a second to load. I'll leave this as DocuSign Forms Library. And then for my select library, I'll scroll down to Georgia Association of Realtors. And this is gonna pull up all 180 GAR forms that you have access to. You can scroll through all of them here. There's a lot of them. So you can search for the form name here. So we'll do um, exclusive seller listing agreement. F101 right here. And then I also need the seller's uh, property disclosure so I can search F301. I do wanna point out that you can search for the name or the, the form number. So as you start to uh, use specific forms, that way it'll make it really easy for you to search because you just know, oh, perfect F301. And then we want the community association disclosure and I can select. F322. I don't need the lead-based paint for today because this property was built after 1978 and uh, it's gonna be the same functionality as the other two disclosures. So once we walk through that, it'll be the same process for the lead-based paint if you need that. But I do wanna add the um, purchase and sale agreement. I know today this example is a listing and we traditionally wouldn't be the one filling out a purchase and sale agreement, but this is gonna be a really important document. So I just wanna quickly review that with you as well. So I'm gonna click add. And now the page will reload and it's going to add those documents into the room docs folder. If you want to move those uh, documents, you can. There are two different ways that you can move, move documents. The first way is if you scroll your mouse over the form icon, a radio button will appear in the top left-hand corner of that icon. 
you can select that radio button to select that document. And whenever you select a document, this toolbar will appear up here at the top. So you can select all the documents that you want and then come up here to the top and click on the move icon. Then we'll select a destination. I'm gonna select folder in current room. And then I'll select the listing agreement folder and then click move. The page will reload and those documents are now in the listing agreement folder. The second way that you can move documents is by simply rolling your mouse over the document, holding your mouse down and dragging it into the desired folder. And there you go, it's that simple. So now I have my documents organized. So I have my listing agreement and all those documents separated from my purchase and sale. So now that we have all of our documents in here, let's start updating. So I'm gonna get started with the exclusive seller listing agreement, F101. All right, here we go. Now we know that this is the 2021 form because right up here in the top right hand corner, it says 2021 printing. You do wanna make sure that you are using the 2021 version. If for whatever reason you see a 2020 version, uh, I would recommend creating a new room because it's probably connected to an old room that was made or created before they updated the forms. So filling in these forms and DocuSign is gonna be very similar to what we've done in dot loop. And I recommend to start at the top and work our way down and fill in all the information that we have. You'll see here that the property address has been filled in based on the information that I filled in on the details tab. One thing I wanna point out about information that is pre-populated from the details tab, if you, if I were to edit any of these uh, fields here, that would then edit the information on the details tab, which would then make the same change on every other document in the room. So if I update this property address here on the, on the listing agreement, it's gonna update the property address in the details tab and then the property address on every other field. So just be mindful of that. Uh, before you change or delete any of the pre-populated information. So I'm just going to start filling in. So we have our tax ID. So I'm just going to put in, you know, a long number there. Then we have our legal description. I'm going to select one of these boxes here. So I'm going to select attached as an exhibit here too, because I've reached out to Campbell and Brandon and get Organic DC or McMahon and me to get a copy of that legal description. I'm going to scroll down to section two and we have our list price. We have a property for sale of 415 that is filled in from the uh, details tab. Now I wanna point out that there's no commas in that number and it has to do with the way that DocuSign mapped this field. Don't worry about it, it's fine. The term, now they have updated um, these forms for 2021. And I do wanna point out that what we're doing this morning is walking through how to use the functionality of DocuSign to fill in these forms, but all the information that actually goes into them uh, please reach out to Lynn, Alita, or any of our compliance partners, or sorry, alliance partners at Campbell, Brannon, Gannick, or McManamy about the actual information that goes in here. So you'll see here, uh, listing price, 415. The terms of this agreement date shall start. I can do today's date. So I'll just type in 122-2021. Notice how I put that date in numerical uh, format. It's very important that any date on a GAR form is put in this format. DocuSign has mapped these fields to be dates. And if you type in January 22nd, comma, 2021, you'll get an error message and it won't save any of the information on your form. So we have our dates here. We have our marketing. So we'll do FMLS, Georgia MLS, and KWLS. Commission, I'm gonna scroll down here. We'll do, I negotiated 6% of the closing costs and I'm gonna share 3% with that co-op broker. We'll scroll down. Commission adjustment, adjustment to cooperating broker. Uh, do, do, do. Don't need to make any changes here. Separate commission on lease. Don't need to do anything there for a protected period. I'll do 90 days. The agency and brokerage, we do not offer dual agency and we do not offer sub agency. And the seller does consent to the broker acting 
Uh, oh, sorry, sorry, seller does not consent. You can go ahead uh, and broker acting in dual agency capacity. Uh, it'll be the same on every single agreement that you select. Seven, any special circumstances? None here, so I'm not gonna check any of those. And in section eight, the seller does authorize the broker to assist uh, in, in negotiation. Scrolling down, now we have a bunch of explanation. Going through all the text. All right. Now we get here to our brochures. So here um, we have all the different brochures. All of these brochures are uploaded into uh, DocuSign. So make sure that you send them. So I'm going to select all the brochures I'm going to send. So ABC of agency. Let, I'm not going to select lead-based paint because this house was built in 2009. Mold, uh, radon testing, protect yourself when selling a home. And this isn't a short sale or distressed property, so I won't select that. And then we have our exhi exhibits or addenda. So I'll select legal description and I'll make this exhibit A. And I'm gonna scroll down. Now we have our special stipulations. Now, for whatever reason, um, the GAR forms only have this tiny little space for special stipulation. I imagine for the listing agreement, you probably don't have a ton of special steps. If you do, I would recommend that you add an additional special stipulations page. But you can just type in your special step here. Second step, and you'll be good to go. Now, if you do need to add the additional stipulations page, you'll have to select this box here, and then you'd also have to add that form into your room. Scrolling down, we have our clients' names and email addresses. I'm gonna scroll down here to my information. I'm gonna double check it, and I'm gonna fill in the remaining field. So the MLS office code, so I'm gonna type in KWFA01. License number H-33313, fax number 404-531-5708, licensee number 404-414-8238, fax number, I'll just use the office one, license number, realtor membership Atlanta. Now, these fields do not auto-populate at the moment, but we are having conversations with DocuSign to see if we can have these fields uh, that get filled in permanently, since it's gonna be the same on every document. So now we've gotten to the bottom of the listing agreement. To finish, we need to click save and close here at the bottom of the page or up here, save and close. And that will save all the information that we just input into that form. All right. So now that we filled out our listing agreement, now we can work on our disclosures. So I'm gonna open up the seller's property disclosure. And again, very similar to what we just did. We'll start at the top of the document and work our way down. So we don't have an exhibit letter yet because this is not a part of a purchase and sale agreement. And we don't have an offer date, but we can see that the property address has been uh, filled in. And I can change that if I want to, but again, I don't need to because it'll change the details tab. And then scrolling down, you'll see that we have all of these fields here and it's missing text fields and check boxes. That is on purpose. As agents, we are not able or we are not to fill in any of the disclosures on behalf of our clients. So it looks right here like these, for, uh, excuse me, that these forms are not set up correctly, but they are. All of these text fields and check boxes are mapped to seller one. So when seller one goes to fill, to sign these documents, he or she will have the ability to fill in all this information. And we'll walk through that in depth uh, when we sign these documents. So I'm gonna scroll down just to make sure that everything is good to go. Nothing's missing. Everything else looks good. Get to the bottom. Perfect, names are filled in. I'm gonna click save and close because there's nothing for us to add here. I'm going to open up the community association disclosure. All right. 
And again, it's gonna be the same thing where we have our um, address up here, but no offer date, yep. And scrolling down again, all these fields look blank because we're not able to fill them in, but the seller one will have the ability to when he or she is signing. So just wanna scroll through again, just to double check and make sure nothing's missing. And everything looks good to go. So I'm gonna click save and close. So that's how easy it is for you to set up your disclosures. It would be the same for the lead-based paint disclosure as well. So I'm gonna come over here. Now I know that traditionally the listing agent would not fill in the purchase and sale agreement, but because it is probably one of the most important forms that you will be using in your real estate career, I wanna walk through it just so we can familiarize uh, ourselves with it. So I'm gonna open up the purchase and sale agreement. All right, and then again, like every other form, we'll start at the top and we'll work our way down and fill in all the information. So off our offer date, so I'll add in a date. So I'll just add today's date, 2021. And again, notice how it's in numerical format and you wanna do all of your dates in that format. Scrolling down, we have our property address, our MLS number, we need to add the tax ID. So I'm just gonna type in a number there. We have our legal description. I'm going to select attach as an exhibit here too. Scroll through purchase price. We're going to offer it. Let's do 405. Seller's closing costs. We're going to ask for 5,000. Date of possession will be at closing and we'll do, uh, let's do February 23rd, 2021. Perfect. Holder of earnest money. We'll do Keller Williams first Atlanta. Closing attorney, I'm gonna do Campbell and Brandon. Earnest money, we will do, 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 do we'll do $4,000 within three days of binding. And again, same thing as dot loop, just filling in the information as we get, scroll through. Our due diligence, we'll do 10 days. Lead-based paint was uh, not built prior to 1978. And then here we have our buyer brokerage. So at this point, let's say I'm working with a Harry Norman agent. So I'll do Harry Norman. They are representing as client. I'm representing my client, seller as client. Interior relationships not that I know of. And we'll do a time limit of offer to 12 p.m. on 1-23-2020. All right. And I'll just keep scrolling through the purchase and sale agreement and fill in the information as needed. All right, so here we go. Now it's gonna automatically check the all cash sale. Just uncheck it. Now I will say with the 2021 forms, some of these exhibit letters are mixed up um, and they're automatically linked to other documents. So if you have that issue, we can just add text fields in the envelope. So what I'm gonna do here is I'll do my legal description. I'll make this exhibit A. Then I'll have my seller's property disclosure. I'll make this exhibit B. And then we have our community association disclosure. I'll make that C. So that's how simple it is to add that. Scrolling down to special stipulations. Again, a very small space for stipulations. I don't understand why. Uh, now, if you can fit all of your stipulations here, that's great. If you can't, I would recommend using the additional stipulations page. Or what you could do, and I'll walk you through this in just a moment, is in the envelope, we could add a text box and we can make the font smaller so we can fit more text in the, in the space. I will say, this, will say this, tiny font is probably not going to make uh, you any friends either with the co-op agent or the closing attorney, but it is an option to make sure it fits in the space. So I'm just gonna type in my special steps. go. Now I'm going to scroll down. Here we have our clients' names and email addresses. Now, personally, I do not like to share my client's contact information with any co-op agent. So my first gut instinct would be to delete that client, my client's email off this form. 
However, like I said earlier, anytime you, anytime you change or delete a piece of information in a pre-populated field, it will change or delete that information from the details tab and thus from the entire room. So I don't wanna delete my client's email here because if I do, then my clients will have an email address for me to send these documents to for them to sign. So I'm gonna leave it in here, but I will show you in the envelope how we can hide their email address so that way the co-op agent doesn't have it. Now I'm sure that nine out of 10 agents are gonna be fine. They're not gonna reach out to uh, your client, but I just better safe than sorry. So I'm gonna scroll down here. I'm going to fill in the rest of my fields that are in here. I'm a member of the Atlanta board and our KWFA01. Now I would recommend if you are submitting an offer that you fill in the information for the co-op agent. It's just one less thing for him or her to have to do. Um, and anything that I can do to help position my client's offer above that anyone else's, I'm willing to do. But like I said earlier, we do not send documents to co-op agents for signature through DocuSign. So now that we're here, we've gotten to the bottom of this uh, purchase and sale agreement. We filled everything in. I'm gonna click save and close. So we'll give that a second to save. Any questions on adding documents, filling in information, uh, preparing those? All right. So now that we've gone through, we've updated our, our forms. Now we need to prepare these documents to send for signature. In, docu in DocuSign, the way that you send documents for signature is through an envelope. And the way that Michael New explained envelopes to me, I thought was really helpful, so I like to share it as well. Think of an envelope in DocuSign like a manila envelope in real life. And let's say you printed out all of your uh, GAR forms, you've handwritten in all of the information, and you've organized those forms and then put them in a manila envelope on the corner of your desk. So when you see your client, you can hand that manila envelope to your client and say, please review and sign these forms. The envelope here in DocuSign operates the same way. It is really just a vehicle to transport those documents to your clients for review and signature. There are two ways in DocuSign that you can create envelopes. The first way is within the docu documents tab, you can roll your mouse over the document that you want to send for signature and select it. And just like I said earlier, anytime you select a document, this uh, toolbar will appear and you can select create envelope and you can add as many documents to that envelope as you want. That's option number one. Option number two is by clicking on the envelopes tab. And then up here in the top right-hand corner, we'll select new. I do wanna point out that throughout a transaction, you are gonna send numerous envelopes, maybe 10, 20, 30, 40, you know, depending on how complicated it is, you can send a lot of them. There is no limit on the number of envelopes and there's no worry about having too many of them. Anytime you have to send a document for review or signature, you have to create a new envelope. So just like everything else in DocuSign, we'll start at the top of the page and we'll work our way down, filling in the information. So we have our envelope name. So I'm gonna update this to one, two, three, four, Main Street, um, exclusive seller listing agreement and purchase and sale. This envelope name is for internal purposes. It's so that I can better uh, keep track of all the envelopes that I send. I do recommend that you provide this an accurate name. So that way, anytime throughout the transaction, if there is a question about when someone saw a document or signed a document, you can always go back and check it in the, in, in the specific envelope. So there's my envelope name. The next section is to add documents to the envelope. So I wanna add all those documents that I updated in the, in the documents tab. So I'm gonna click on the room docs button here, and it's gonna show me all of the documents that I have in my room. Now for right now, it's fine because I only have four documents and I wanna send all four of them for signature. But once you're halfway through a transaction, there's gonna be a lot of documents in this room. So you do need to pay attention to make sure that you're adding and selecting the correct forms. So I'll click add selected. And now it adds all four of those documents to the room, or excuse me, to the envelope. Now, that we have our, our documents, 
we need to add our affiliated marketing and our wire fraud prevention disclosures as a part of being with Keller Williams versus Atlanta. The MCA office has set those documents up as templates. And the reason they're set up as templates is because there are no fields on either one of those forms for you to fill in as the agent or for your clients to fill in. All we need is for the, the clients to review and sign those documents. So to add that document or those disclosures to our envelope, I'm gonna click on the use a template button. Then I'm gonna select shared with me. Give this a second to load. And it's gonna pull up all of the documents, all the templates that the MCA office has shared with us. So I'm gonna scroll down. You can see here we have our affiliated marketing and wire fraud prevention, but they are buyer versions. And if I scroll down, I have seller versions. Both of these documents are the are both of these disclosures, either buyer or seller, are the same actual document. However, the signature fields are set up according to which side of the transaction that you are representing. So make sure you select the correct version. If you select the incorrect version, then uh, your clients will not have any place to sign. So I'm gonna click on add selected. It's gonna add those two disclosures. Here we go. Now, I wanna put these documents in a specific review and signature order. I want my listing agreement and all my disclosures to come before the purchase and sale. If you wanna reorder your documents, you have to do it here at this point in creating an envelope. You will not be able to reorder your documents later on. So to get started, I'm gonna roll my mouse over the document, hold my mouse down, and then I'm gonna drag it into the position that I want. So there we have our sellers, our listing agreement. Then I'm gonna come over here to my seller's property disclosure. I want that to be the second document. Then we have our community association. And I want the purchase and sale document, our purchase and sale agreement to be last. So I'm gonna move that into this uh, last position. And now I have all of my documents in the correct order that I wanna to send to my client. Now that we have added all of our documents, put them in the correct order, I'm gonna scroll down. And now we're gonna add recipients to the envelope. To add recipients, I'm gonna click on the add recipient button. It's gonna give you three options. Always select pre-tag roles. It is imperative that you select pre-tag roles because all of these forms are mapped and all those fields are mapped to specific roles. So whether it be seller one, seller two, or you as the agent. If you do not select pre-tag roles, then your clients will not have any place for them to sign or fill in the information on the disclosures. So always select pre-tag roles. So I'll click on pre-tag roles here. I'll have this pop-up window. It's gonna pull up every single role that is on one of these forms. I'm gonna come down here to seller one, and I'm gonna select Tony from this drop-down menu. I'll come over here to seller two. I'm gonna select Pepper Potts. And then for listing agent, I'm going to select myself. Now your name may be in here more than once and that's fine. It doesn't matter. Either one uh, will be uh, work perfectly. Now down here, you'll see we have seller one and seller two. Uh, you don't need to add anyone here because that would just be redundant. So I'm gonna click on add selected. Now it's gonna pull up those three recipients. All right, so there's a handful, of, there's a fair amount of information that we need to review here for each recipient. On the left-hand side, you can see we have these boxes with the number one in them. These boxes will designate the signing order of each person. The system will default to one, which means that everyone has the ability to sign at the same time. However, I like to provide a specific order for my documents. I know some agents that like to sign first before they ever go to their clients and some agents that like to sign afterwards and be last. I'm gonna put these in specific order because Tony as seller one is gonna have all the permission and rights to fill in the disclosures. So I'm gonna leave Tony as one. Then I want Pepper to be signer number two because I want Pepper to be able to review those forms and make sure all the information is correct before it comes to me. 
I'll make myself signer number three, and then we, I can make those forms binding. So now we have our correct signing order. We have our client's names and email addresses that are pulled in from the details tab. Then to the right of that, we have this drop down menu that says needs to sign. This drop down menu has all the different permissions that we can assign to each contact. It's going to default to needs to sign, which I imagine nine times out of 10 you will use. Needs to view, let's say um, you want to send a, a you're working with a, a client and they want their, you know, a spouse or parent or someone else to just view the document, make sure everything's good to go, but they don't actually need to sign it. You can give them this permission here. You also have receives a copy. This is if you want someone to receive a copy of the document, but not have any signing rights. Uh, this may also be if you're, you know, a spouse or a parent, or you could also have the system set up so that way it automatically sends signed documents to your closing attorney or your lender. I would recommend that you let them know ahead of time that they may be receiving these documents so they're not confused as to why there's a new contract in their uh, inbox. And the last one here is specify recipient. To the right of that, we have more. And from here, we have um, the ability to add an access authentication or a private message. The access authentication is gonna be a private code that you can add an additional layer of security for signing. Let's say your client is hesitant about using e-signature. Uh, he or she is afraid that someone's gonna break into his email and then start signing documents and gonna buy a house on his behalf and he has no clue. Well, you can add this access authentication code and you can just type in any code you want. So I can just type in one, two, three, four, five. And so for this situation, I would say, hey, Tony, I'm about to send you over the documents for review and signature. Before you're allowed to sign, it's gonna ask you for a special code. Please write down one, two, three, four, five and type that in before you're able to start signing. You can do that for every single person if you wanted to. You could do different codes for every single person. It's really up to your and your client's relationship. I'm going to click discard because I don't want that. And then the next option is add a private message. So if you want to send something specifically to one client and not everybody, add a private message. Now, I'm going to write one for Tony because as seller one, he is going to be the one that fills in the seller's property disclosure and the community association disclosure. So I'm going to type in, hi, Tony. Uh, please be sure to fill in the SPD and CAD. Thank you, Nick. So there we go. So now we have everything set up for our recipients. We have it in the correct signing order. We have the right permissions and I've added the private message. So I'm gonna scroll down. I don't need to add any more recipients. And now I'm gonna write a message to my uh, recipients. It's, the subject line is going to default to please DocuSign. I recommend that you leave that in there just so that way your clients know that they have, um, there's an action waiting for them to DocuSign. And I'm going to update the title, or the title, uh, excuse me, subject to say one, two, three, four, Main Street, exclusive sale listing agreement and purchase and sale. So they know that there are, what documents are in there for them to review and sign. And I'm going to add an email message here that says, hi, Tony and Pepper, please review and e-sign the listing agreement and purchase and sale. Thank you, Nick. So this is the last step of setting up our envelope before we go in and double check all the signature fields and everything are mapped correctly. correctly. Any questions about setting up the envelope, about giving it a name, adding documents, putting them in a specific order, adding recipients? All right. So now that we are all good setting up our envelope, I'm gonna click next in the top right-hand corner. And this is gonna take me to the envelope editor. And this is where I'm gonna be able to go through and double check and make sure that all the fields, all the information on the documents are correct, is correct all the fields are mapped correctly and I can add any additional information uh, before sending. There's a lot of information on this page, so let's kind of walk through the layout before we actually go through and make any changes. So starting up in the top left-hand corner, we have this back arrow. In the event that you do notice um, something that's incorrect and you need to go back and change it, 
you can always click this back arrow. Every couple seconds, DocuSign is updating and saving the changes that you make. So nine times out of 10, when you make a change, when you come back, it, that change will be there. Now, I do want to point out that if you add text or signature fields to a document manually that, that are not pre-mapped, then you go back into the documents tab to make an edit. When you come back into the envelope, those pre are those added uh, signature fields will be gone because you edited the document as a whole. So then you'll have to re-add those. So I just want to point that out. Here we have our name. Right here in the top left-hand corner, you can see it says Tony Stark. And there's a yellow circle there. There's a drop-down menu, and it has every person, every recipient's name with a color designation for each one. That color designation is going to make it easier for you to visually identify who is responsible for which signature fields and which fields to fill in on all the documents. So you can see now I have it as Tony and all these standard fields down here are yellow. If I select pepper, everything changes to blue. So it just makes it really, really quick for you to uh, see who needs to sign where. Below here in this uh, menu, we have numerous different standard fields. So I can add a signature field, initial, date signed, name, email, company, text, checkbox, drop down, radio buttons, all these different fields that I can add to any of the documents. Now, if you're using a GAR form from within DocuSign, most of these fields will already be pre-mapped for you to fill in in the Documents tab. But let's say in the event you are receiving an offer or a counter offer or a form that you need to then upload and then add signature fields, this is where you add all those fields here. In the middle here, we have a preview of the document so I can see everything that's on that document just to double check everything is good to go. If you want to change the zoom in percentage, you can. It will default to fit to width. Then on the right hand side, we have a menu and it's going to show the list of all of the documents in the order that we put them in previously. And you can expand them and it's going to show you thumbnails of each one of the documents. When you scroll down, you'll notice on this page, there are these um, placeholders that point out that there's a yellow, blue, and purple tab. That lets me know that on this page, there is a signature field or a field map to each one of the recipients. It's gonna make it a lot easier for you to just quickly go through and double check and say, all right, on all these pages, I have a yellow tab, which means that Tony has something he has to do. Now that we've walked through the layout of this page, let's go through the documents and double check, make sure that everything is set up correctly and make any corrections before we send for signature. So I'm just gonna start at the top and we're gonna scroll our way through all of these documents. Now on the seller's listing agreement, everything looks good except, see, it looks like I missed uh, checking section B1 as an exhibit here too. So I'm gonna select myself. So I'm purple, I'm gonna come down here, add a checkbox, add that checkbox right there. I'm gonna double click it. Now, one thing I wanna do is I'm gonna come over here and I wanna select read only. And the reason I'm selecting read only is because I don't wanna be able to change this checkbox when I go to sign it. And I wanna make sure that this checkbox appears and shows when I send this to my clients. So since I'm the third and final signer, I want everything to appear so everything is good to go when they review and sign. So now I'm set up there, so I'll scroll down. Our list price and dates look good. Our marketing looks good. Everything else here is good to go. You'll notice here at the bottom of the first page of the GAR forms, there are some text about the copyright usage of these forms. Our name would, or in the past, would automatically populate here. However, Alita confirmed that because our name and brokerage appears here in the bottom left-hand corner, that that is more than enough to confirm that we do have the right to use these forms. So you don't need to add your name there if you don't want to. All right, everything else looks good here. Protect the period, no sub-agency or dual agency, no special circumstances. We do have the ability to negotiate. Keep scrolling down. All right, all those brochures are checked. Well, this is weird, change it to other. 
All right, so I'm going to add another checkbox here. And I'm going to double click it to check it. And then I'll make read only. I will tell you some of these forms at times feel like they are possessed. They have a mind of their own. Um, we are working with DocuSign to get those um, irregularities updated and corrected. <laughs> so if you see anything that's weird, give me a call. I can walk you through how to troubleshoot. Scrolling down, here we have our special stipulations. If you're like, oh no, I forgot to add my third stipulation, we can add a text box here and add that third step. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select myself in the drop down. I'll come here to the text box. I'll add a text box right here and then I'll format and I'll start typing in. Here is my third stipulation. Here is my fourth. And we're good to go. Now you'll see here how this is uh, purple and it's filled in. Excuse me, if the text box is filled in with that color, that means it's a required field, which means that when I go to sign, the system is gonna stop me here to make sure that there's text. However, because I've already filled it in here and I want these stipulations to appear when I send it to my client, I'm gonna uncheck required and I'm gonna check read only, which removes the ability for anyone to make an edit to this field and will ensure that every time someone signs it, this information appears. So now I'm gonna scroll down. I'm gonna check, double check that our client signatures are all good to go. Their information is correct. I'm gonna do thing, the same thing for myself here. We have signature field and date signed. Awesome. Now, one thing that we can do um, or that I really, really like about DocuSign is that once everybody signs the documents, DocuSign automatically sends signed copies to all the recipients. So that kind of takes one less, uh, one step off of our plate of what we have to do. So to do, to minimize then having to make this document binding and resending, I can go ahead and add text fields here. So I can fill in this information and it will be binding. So I'm gonna add a text field right here and then I'm gonna format it to fit. And another thing I really like about DocuSign is that you can right mouse click on any field, copy, paste. So I'll leave those as required because I'm going to fill in the time um, when I actually sign. And then I'm going to add the date sign field right here. And this will automatically add that date when I sign. So there we go. So now when this document is sent out, it'll be binding already. So I'm going to scroll down and now we're going to go to the seller's property disclosure. Now remember when we were in the uh, documents tab, all these fields and everything was blank. But here you can see we have all these yellow outline text boxes. This is to say that all these fields are mapped to seller one. However, you'll notice that these fields are not filled in yellow and that lets me know that these are not required fields, which means that the system is not going to stop uh, Tony when he goes to fill in these forms. Nine times out of 10, when there is an issue with their clients filling in the disclosures and they're like, hey, did, I didn't have the ability to fill in the information. It's not that they didn't have the ability, it's that they did not realize that they would have to scroll back up to fill in those fields. A cool trick that you can do is on the seller's property disclosure, this first text box, what year was the main dwelling constructed? You can click on that text box. And then over here in the menu on the right-hand side, you can select required field. By selecting required field, this will tell DocuSign, hey, when Tony is signing, stop here and make sure Tony fills in this text box. Then when he does that, it's gonna be much easier for him to then go through and fill in the rest of the check boxes and information. So I'm gonna scroll down, double check and make sure everything is mapped correctly to seller one, which is yellow, and everything else looks good to go. All right, still scrolling, everything is still mapped correctly, looks good to go. All of our items there have check boxes. I come down here and it has my client's signatures and date signed, so we're good to go. I'll keep continuing through. And our next document is our community association disclosure. Similar to seller's property disclosure, now we have all these yellow outline boxes that are assigned to Tony. However, because they're not required, like I previously said, 
previously said, the system will just jump right over all these boxes. So I want the system to stop Tony so he can fill in, fill in the information. I don't know what type of HOA uh, my clients have. So I don't wanna make any one of these boxes required because I don't want it to make him have to fill in information that's incorrect. So what I can do is I can come down here and I can say for contact information for association, name of association, I can click that text box. And again, I can make this required and this will stop Tony have to fill in this information and it'll make it a lot easier for him to scroll up, fill in the information as needed and fill out the rest of the form. I'll scroll down and we have our client's initials right there. So we're good to go. Next, we have our wire fraud awareness disclosure. Now I wanna point this out and I don't know why it happens, but it has something to do with DocuSign, but double check the signature fields and you're gonna to need to move them into the right place. I don't know why, for whatever reason, after the MCA office saves them, it automatically pushes the signature fields down. So I'm gonna scroll down. Now we have our affiliated marketing. I'll scroll down here. You can see it's missing our client signature and date sign. So I'm gonna add those fields. So I'll come over here to Tony, click signature. Add that right there. I'm going to format it just to be a little bit smaller so it fits. And I'm going to add date signed. And I'm going to do the same thing for Pepper. And then date signed. Now we've gotten to the end of the, oh, now we have our purchase and sale agreement. Again, we'll go through and double check everything here, make sure I'm not missing any information. So far, everything looks good. See here for the brokerage relationship, Keller Williams First Atlanta, it just is a little bit too big, um, which is why I recommend removing Realty. We have our client's initials here. Keep scrolling. All right, here we have our exhibits and it has the letters on them, so we're good to go. Right there, special stipulations. Again, if you wanted to add some more stipulations, you can select yourself from the drop down, add a text box, and then you can type in, type in. Oh, excuse me. So I still added a text box for Tony. Now I don't want this to be for Tony, I want it to be for myself. So whenever I'm in the text box over here on the right hand side, this menu pops up. I can actually change that text box recipient from Tony to myself. And now it shows as purple. So now it's assigned to me. So I can finish typing in additional steps. More, more, lots more, even more. Now I added a, too many steps here and now you have to scroll, but you can't scroll on a PDF. So this is what I was saying earlier. If you want to, you can select all that text and then come over here to formatting. And I can change this font to seven point font. And now it's small and it all fits there. Now, again, this isn't gonna make you any friends, but it does at least get all of your stipulations onto a single page. And I also wanna make this uh, read only and uncheck required. So now that text will appear every single time someone reviews and signs this document. Scrolling down, we double check our signature. We have our client signature. Now, this is where I was telling you earlier I don't like to share my client's information with co-op agents. The easiest way to hide their information is by using a markup tool. So over here on the left-hand side, we have a pencil of, a, a, excuse me, an icon of a pencil named markup tools. I'm gonna to click on that. I'm gonna add a line. I can come right here. I'm gonna drag a line right through that contact email address. I can update the color to black. And then thickness, I'm gonna make that a 10 point thickness. And then I'm just gonna kind of drag it so it hides that email address. Perfect. I'm gonna right mouse click on it, copy, paste. And I'm gonna drag this down and I'm gonna cover the Pepper's email, make it just a little bit longer. And then we are good to go. So while black bars are not the most beautiful thing to see on a purchase and sale contract, it does effectively 
protect my client's contact information. Scrolling down, everything else looks good. My Here's my signature, date signed, everything is filled in here. All right, so now we are good to go. I can send this to my clients, but if you wanna double check and see what it's gonna be like for your clients to review, you can click on recipients preview, and this is going to show you uh, what your clients will see if they are either on a desktop, an iPad, or a mobile phone. Now, the reason I point this out is because there's going to be a time where you're in a multiple offer situation. You have to get your, your contract or your offer to your clients as soon as possible, but they had dinner reservations. So you can let them know, hey, the, the offer is in your it, uh, email. Can you please go ahead and review it and sign it on your phone so I can get that over to the co-op agent as soon as possible? And they can do that. But it's going to be really hard to read. Right here, you can see it's really small, but they do have the ability to sign on their phone. When you're done with the rib preview, you can click the X here. And now I'm gonna come and I'm gonna click send. And this is gonna send this document out for signature. See, waiting for others. Now remember I set up um, a signing order, so it's gonna go to Tony first. So I need to open up my email or open up Tony's email. So I'm gonna do that really quickly. So let me just come up here. It's Update Tony's email. And then here you can see we have please docusign 1234 Main Street ELSA and PSA. So I'm going to click on that to open the email. Scroll down here. Here's that private message that I sent to just Tony. Please be sure to fill in the SPD and CAD. And then here's the message for everybody. I'm going to click on review documents. I'm gonna to agree to use electronic records, continue. I'm gonna click start. Now remember, I'm signing as Tony right now, so Tony will click start. It'll take him to that first required field. It's gonna skip through everything and just go to the required field, so he'll sign. It's gonna ask him to confirm his signature, adopt and sign. Then it's gonna take him to that next required field. And remember, I set up this first uh, field on the seller's property disclosure to be required, so I can type in 2009. And now it's gonna be so much easier for me to fill in and check all these other boxes and I can add text, oh, add text here, add text here, more, more, lead-based paint, no. And I'm just gonna go through, I'm not gonna select everything, but I just wanna go through because I wanna show you what it's like for when Pepper signs. HVAC is eight years old. Uh, date of last will do 11 1 2020. All right, water here, one year. I'm just gonna skip all this just for time. Then I'm gonna scroll down here. Then I'm just gonna click a bunch of random items perfect i'm gonna scroll down we're gonna sign and again, it's gonna stop me on the community association disclosure to fill in this required field of the name of the association. So I'm just gonna type in the name of HOA. And now it's gonna be a lot easier for Tony to scroll up and he can select, all right, so we can do our mandatory homeowners association. I can check that. And it's gonna be $1,000 a year. And it's gonna be paid in four installments. Perfect. Any other association fees? No, no utilities. and then. Um, type in this name, person's name, uh, company, no, 404, 123, 4567, email at email.com. So you get the idea how much easier it is 
for Tony to fill this in when you make that first field required. And then he can come through here and he can select all the other fields. Uh, under construction, under consideration, or already passed. There's not any litigation. Tony can uh, initial, sign the disclosures, sign, initial. And I want to scroll up because you can see here those additional stipulations that I typed in the envelope. And because I made uh, read only, they show up here and you can see that they're a smaller font. So now Tony can sign. Now, once your client has signed all the required fields, it'll say finish up here in the top right-hand corner or at the very bottom of the page. Your client needs to click finish and then it's gonna ask them if they want to create a DocuSign account. You can let them know, they can click no thank you. And then they need to get to the you're all done page. By clicking on, by receiving the you're all done page, that, that's the system letting them know that they've completed everything that they're required to. And now the next person will have the ability to review and sign those documents. If they do not receive the you're all done page, they haven't completed signing. And now Pepper will not have the ability to review and sign. It's gonna hold up the process. So I'm gonna close this window. over here. Now I'm going to open up uh, my personal email address that I'm going to be using for Pepper. And you can see here we have a oh, wrong one. Where is, here we go, my Gmail. Our first email here is please DocuSign, 1234 Main Street, scroll down. Here's the message that I sent to both Tony and Pepper, but you notice that there is not a private message here like what I included for Tony. I'm going to plug in my computer. All right, so now Pepper is gonna click review documents. It's gonna open up a new window for her. Uh, Pepper is gonna to agree to electronic signatures. Continue, start, sign, ask her to confirm her signature, adopt and sign. And now it jumped to the very end of the seller's property disclosure, but I'm gonna scroll up just because I wanna show you um, that all of the information that Tony input on the seller's property disclosure shows up for when Pepper signs it. And that's important because you can let your clients know, hey, seller one, when you fill in the information, make sure everything's accurate. And then seller two, you have the ability to review and double check everything because they will be legally held to the information that is put on these disclosures. If anything is incorrect, that'll put your clients at risk for having to pay any differences or any additional fees or whatnot. And we want to protect our clients. We want everything to be as honest and accurate as possible. So this gives seller two the ability to review. So you can see here, she can review all the check boxes, all the information filled in. Let's go to the bottom. Here's all the fixtures that are going to remain in the house. Pepper's going to sign. I'm gonna do the same thing for the community association disclosure and see 1,004 installments. Here's all this information, all these check boxes. Initial, sign, sign, the purchase and sale, she will initial and then sign. And you can see there are those black boxes again. So their information's protected. Now that she finished signing, she's gonna click finish. Again, it's gonna ask her to create an account. Your clients can click on no thank you, no thanks. And now she receives the you're all done page. So now Pepper is done signing. So now I'm gonna click back into my work uh, email right here. And now it gives me the option, Nicholas Core, Core please DocuSign. So here's a message to everyone. I'll click review documents. All right, I'll click continue and I'll start. I'm going to sign. Now, remember, I, I made those uh, text boxes at the bottom of the listing agreement so that way I can go ahead and make it binding. So I can go ahead and type in 11 a.m. and it's going to automatically add the date there. So I filled that in. So I'll click fill in and I can go to sign. And now I'm finished. So I will click finish here. 
going to ask me if I want to sign in. Say no thanks. And now I've received the you're all done message. And that lets me know that everybody has signed this document. So I'm going to give the system just a second. But you'll see here in um, Tony's email, as soon as everyone signed, he gets an email from DocuSign that says completed. Please DocuSign 1234 Main Street, listing agreement and purchase and sale. He can open up that email and attach those PDFs are all the copies of the documents that everyone just signed. Now, I would still recommend uh, from a customer service perspective that you still organize all these documents and send them to your clients uh, so they have them for the records. But this does take one step off your plate if you do not regularly do that. So they do have actual notice of these documents. So now that we have signed everything, I'm going to go back into DocuSign. I'm going to refresh the page. And it's going to show me that this envelope is completed. I can click on the envelope. And it's going to show me everyone that assigned and the time that they assigned. So I'll click the X right there. And now I'm going to go back to the Documents tab. I'm going to scroll down to the room docs folder. And remember, I told you everything will default into the room docs folder. So you can see here all these documents that have green check boxes that say signed. Those are my signed documents. Well, I want to put, I want to organize my documents into the correct folder. So I'm going to select all of my signed documents that are part of the listing agreement. So disclosure, community association, sellers listing, property disclosure, and wire fraud. So I'm going to select all those documents. Click on move, select my folder and current room, select listing docs and click move. The page will reload. Now it's going to move all those, document, <clears throat> all those documents into that listing agreement folder. So it's more uh, organized for me to notice uh, where everything is. You'll see here, you will get the certification document. That's gonna happen with every single envelope you sent. And again, this is just, Another thing that'll show you the confirmation when everyone signed, if there is ever any question. Since you will get this for every single envelope, I personally like to archive them just so it um, takes up less space. All right, so now we have everything signed. I wanna show you cool, some quick trip, tick, ugh, excuse me, some quick tips in DocuSign before we upload for compliance. I recommend that you email your documents to your clients um, personally, but what I like to do is I like to combine them into one email or into one PDF. And you may do this also for offers that you send. Some of your co-op agents may request that everything is sent as one single document. Well, you can do that in DocuSign. To combine documents, I'm gonna roll my mouse over and I'm gonna select all the documents that I wanna combine. So I'm gonna select all of my signed copies here. Then I'm going to roll my mouse over the icons until I get to the combine icon. I'm going to click that. Now it gives me the ability to sign uh, or give this document a name. So I'll uh, label this executed listing agreement, one, two, three, four, Main Street Northeast. Now I want to put these in the correct order. So if you want to move them in the order, just roll your mouse over the document name, click it, and drag it into the position that you would like. So I'm going to do seller's listing agreement, seller's property disclosure, then community association, affiliated marketing, and wire fraud, and click save. The page will reload, and now this single document will be added into my room docs folder right here. So I want to drag that up into my listing documents. So I'm going to click on it and drag it up into the correct folder. Now, here we go. So I'm gonna open up this document to show you all the pages that are combined. So we have 21 pages here, all in a single document. Everything is good to go. We get down to the signature page, all the signatures, here's the binding. Now, let's say you are the listing agent and you receive an offer from a buyer's agent and that buyer's agent combined all of the documents and disclosures into a single document, but you need to upload them uh, as separate individual documents for compliance review. Well, you do also have the ability within DocuSign to separate documents, to split them. So I'm just gonna use this document here as an example. So what you can do when you're in the document, sorry, you would upload it into DocuSign. Then up here in the top right-hand corner, there's a document actions button. 
you'll click on that and then come down here to the option that says split. And this is going to give us the ability to split up one document into multiple documents. On the left hand side is where we're going to give each new document a name and designate which pages of this single document we're going to use. And then on the right hand side, if you roll your mouse over the uh, previews, it'll zoom in so you can see exactly what is on each document. So I'm going to start by um, giving this document a name. So I'll name this um, Exclusive Seller Listing Agreement Engagement. Uh, engagement agreement, excuse me. And then I'm going to type in, I'll do pages one through nine. And now it's going to highlight those pages so I can double check and confirm. Yep, those are all the pages for that document that I want. And now I want to add another document. So click add document. And then we'll do seller's property disclosure. And we'll do page 10 through 16. Now I want to add another document and we'll do the community association disclosure and we'll do page 17 through 19. Now let's say you don't want to use every single form or every single page of this document. You don't have to. So I can leave off these disclosures and I can just separate these three individual documents. So once I'm done deciding which documents and which pages I want each one to be, I can click save the page will reload and it's going to add those separated documents into my room docs folder. So you can see here, CAD, ESL, EA, and SPD. If I wanted to, I can select, oh, I mean, I can move them if I wanted to. Move, folder and current room, listing agreement, move. All right. So now that we've gone through, we've sent our documents for signature, we've combined them, we've separated them. Now we need to submit our documents for compliance review to Lynn and Alita. So the way that you're gonna do that is within command, I'm gonna go back into command, let me pull up that tab. All right. So I'm gonna come into back into the documents tab of the opportunity. Now I need to attach all of these documents to submit. To add a file, so here we have our listing agreement. There's a couple different ways that you can add documents and I'll show you all of them. The first is you can click on add a file here and I can individually add each document. I'm gonna select the source of documents, DocuSign. And this is where that main benefit of having the two systems connected because it's gonna pull up all the documents that I have available to me in my DocuSign room. Since I created a folder, I could select a folder and click on listing agreement. And then I can scroll down and find the uh, listing agreement that I want to use. Now you'll notice there's every single document in here and they can get kind of repetitive. So you need to be very careful that you select the right one. So I'm going to come here and do my exclusive seller listing agreement dash signed. I'm going to select that and click assign. And now it's going to upload that document right here for uh, Lynn and Alita for, to review. Now I have a handful of documents that I need to add. So I can add multiple files at once. So I can click on attach multiple files right here in this toolbar. And again, I'll select DocuSign as the source of my documents. And I come here to community association disclosure. And then I can scroll down and I can select community association disclosure dash signed. Seller's property disclosure will do the same thing here. So there's property disclosure dash signed. Our Rawls Group affiliated marketing. Let's do scroll down. Looks like I passed it, so we'll just scroll back up. Here we go. Affiliated marketing dash signed. And then our wire uh, fraud disclosure. So I'll scroll down. I believe it's the last one. Rawls Group. Uh, prevention notice balls group signed and then click attach. Now it has added multiple documents at once. If you want to look at a preview of the document, you can click on the document name and this will show you a preview just to make sure everything's good to go. It's going to default to this history page. So anytime you submit a document, it, uh, there's a history. You can see it here 
And if there's a rejection reason, it will be typed in here. You can also print or download to your computer. Now, let's say you have a document that is not one of these uh, pre-listed documents and you wanna add that. You can come right here and click on add item. And now this will give us the, the ability to add any document we want. So I can give this a name and I'm gonna name this fully executed listing agreement. Select document type. We have a list from the document type. Select the, the type that is most similar to what you're uploading. It doesn't have to be exactly, uh, and it, cause it's not going to affect uh, compliance review. Then we have our source of documents. I'm gonna select DocuSign again. And then I wanna come down and I want to select my executed listing agreement here. So that's gonna be that huge file and click save. And now it is going to add that fully executed listing agreement right here. So that's how you add additional documents. Once you have uploaded all of your documents for your listing or have gone under contract, the submit MC button up here in the top right hand corner will become green. That lets you know that you can click on that. You must click on submit to MC to send your opportunity to Lynn and Alita for compliance review. If you do not click on submit to MC, they will not know that there are documents for them to review. You also need to submit a green sheet to the MCA office so they know that they can start double checking those documents and be on the lookout for any earnest money or closing checks. What questions do you have for how to use DocuSign and submitting documents for compliance? We've gone through a lot of information this morning. What can I clarify for you? What can I show you again? What did I miss? If you have any questions, feel free to unmute and let me know. Hey, Nick. Yeah. So you uh, you recorded this whole thing, correct? Correct. And I'm going to upload it to our the YouTube channel in just a few minutes. And then this afternoon, I'll send out a training update email that will include a link to this video as well. Okay, great. That ought to do it for me. All right. Well, thank you guys for uh, joining me. Let me know what questions come up as you are working in DocuSign. Uh, and I will talk to you later. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks, Nick. You too. Thank you. you too. Thank you.